Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord. We certainly do give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good and his mercy endureth forever. We certainly praise God for another opportunity uh, to come live before you uh, on this day, this great and notable day. <clears throat> certainly, God is great and he is greatly to be praised. The scripture says he's so great to be praised from the rising of the sun unto the going down of the same. He's greatly to be praised. Certainly a wonderful day out on today. The sun is shining, uh, the weather is hot, and we certainly uh, praise God for this great weather that we're having. Uh, we're going to uh, go before the Lord in prayer, and as we get ready to go before the Lord in prayer, I uh, certainly do want to remember uh, men and women and children everywhere that the Lord will continue to save and add to the church daily such as should be saved. Uh, we also want to remember uh, bereaved families, uh, remember uh, the families um, in Syracuse and Monticello especially, uh, that the Lord will send forth comfort and, and strength unto them. And we want to pray for families all across the world and all uh, across the United States that the Lord will continue to bring people closer together, especially in times like these that uh, he said in his word that he would never leave us nor forsake us. So let us pray that we all have strength, that we won't leave one another, that we won't forsake one another. And also too, it's been laid on my heart, if we all have any differences uh, one to another or any offenses, let us uh, forgive, let us forgive and love one another as the Bible has proclaimed. Uh, also to let us pray uh, for uh, the family that had lost their brother in um, Minneapolis, Min I'm sorry, Minneapolis. Let us pray for them, uh, that racial injustice that is going on throughout the world, uh, especially in the United States. Um, I know it's not often that I speak of such things uh, in such a way, but let us pray because it's truly a problem, uh, a problem that needs to be recognized and a problem that uh, can be adjusted. So let us pray uh, that justice will be done. Uh, it won't go away until justice is done on a continual basis. So let us pray one for another, pray for the family, pray for all those that are affected even by injustice, not only black, white, but also Jew, Hispanic, uh, all, all races and all nationalities. Uh, let every heart pray. Gracious Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we certainly do thank you and praise you for your grace, your mercy, your love, and your kindness. We thank you, Lord, for allowing us to come together one more time in the name of Jesus. We ask you, Lord, that you bless us and strengthen us as we carry on your work. And Lord, as we uplift your name, Remember each and every request that's been made known both here in this sanctuary and those that are being made known in, in uh, places, residents, and throughout this great world. We ask you, Lord, that you send forth your anointing, send forth your glory, your honor, your power, and your strength. We ask you, Lord, that you grant that door of utterance in the name of Jesus and send forth your word into the hearts of the, these great people and we know that your word will not return unto your void, but accomplish wherein to it is sent. And now, Lord, we send your word, hallelujah, to heal, to deliver, to set free, to convict in the name of Jesus, to build up, to give strength. Uh, we pray in the name of Jesus. Amen and amen. Amen. So we certainly uh, do welcome you to another uh, broadcast here of Christian Ministries of the Apostolic Faith Church, where I am the lead pastor, Pastor Frankie L. Quinn. Amen. And we certainly do thank God for all of you that are tuning in and for those who are uh, going to be listening after. Amen. I pray for you as well. Uh, certainly, uh, God is a wonderful God and he's greatly to be praised. And as we get ready tonight to delve into the word of God, I want to give a shout out to my wife, uh, Lady Tracy Quinn. We certainly do thank and praise God for her 
and we thank and praise God for all the members and the leadership of Christian Ministries of the Apostolic Faith Church, uh, Erie, PA. Um, as we begin on tonight, um, I want to talk to you tonight about spiritual strength. I want to talk to you tonight about spiritual strength. And um, there's a scripture in the book of Daniel, Daniel's chapter uh, number 11 and verse 32. And it says, and as such as do wickedly against the covenant shall he corrupt by flatteries, but the people that do know their God shall be strong and do exploits. And uh, that particular scripture uh, coming out of the book of Daniel, in this particular verse, uh, we need to focus on he. And it says, and as such as do wickedly against the covenant shall he corrupt by flatteries. And that he represents a particular king, a king that uh, invaded uh, Israel, if, if you allow me to say it, invaded them. Uh, he was going off, uh, exploring and, and conquering. That's what kings do. They, they want to gather land and they go off conquering and things such as that. So he entered into uh, Jerusalem, and this is uh, after their uh, captivity. They're returning back to their homeland. And while he was there, he went into the temple, and he went into the temple of God, and uh, he seduced other people, other Israelites, uh, to go along with him. And he went into the temple of God and offered up a sacrifice of pigs. And anyone that knows anything about Jewish history, um, that's a desecration. And that's what Daniel speaks of uh, in the Bible, talks about an abomination. Uh, and this is certainly an abomination unto the Lord because pigs were considered unclean and offering up an unclean sacrifice on the altar of God is a no-no. So uh, my point in this, particular scripture and our subject tonight we're talking about spiritual strength and notice what it says it says um, in Daniel chapter 11 verse 32 and it says and as such as do wickedly against the covenant shall he corrupt by flatteries but the people that do know their God shall be strong and do great exploits uh, the king used deceit to win over followers so that he could get into the temple to offer up this abomination uh, unto idol and pagan gods. So the king will deceive unfaithful followers, unfaithful followers to God. But those who remain faithful to God will uh, resist the evil and oppose the evil and do good. So that particular scripture, it fits in line with our subject on tonight. It says, and as such as do wickedly against the covenant, referring to those who give in to evil and turn from the law of the Lord, uh, they will do wicked deeds and wicked actions. The scripture says that a fool have said uh, that there is no God. A foolish person denies the presence and the power of God. And those people who deny God like that, it goes on to say that they are corrupt and they will do corrupt deeds and actions. And uh, uh, they will follow after other people that do corrupt things and corrupt actions. So they will be corrupted then by wicked people. Uh, if, if an individual isn't following after God, they will do corrupt and evil things. The scripture says, where there is no vision, the people perish. And that vision literally correlates into purpose and people following after a purpose. Uh, people that don't have a mind for God and live for God 
they will follow after evil and wicked things. Um, so I don't want to really get stuck into that, but I'm trying to build the message uh, because our message deals tonight with spiritual strength. But the people that know their God, now that's what I want to focus on. The people that know their God, they keep God's commandments. Those that don't know God, they don't keep the commandments of God. But people that know God, that know their God, that are in a relationship with Jehovah, they are in a relationship with the Almighty, they they keep his commandments. They walk with him. They, they live for him. And they adhere to his words. They worship him in spirit and in truth. And literally, those that are, have a sincere connection and a relationship with God, it would be impossible. It would literally be impossible for them to fall away. It would be impossible for them to give up uh, and turn and do wicked and evil things. Uh, people that don't know their God, uh, it is easy for them to turn their back on God and give in to evil deeds and assignments. Uh, the book of 1 John, I just want to go here real quick. Uh, this is my introduction. <laughs> so just bear with me just for a quick second. Uh, but the book of 1 John, <clears throat> chapter number 2, 1 John chapter number 2 and verse 18 and 19. It says, uh, 1 John chapter number 2, verse 18 and 19, it says, Little children, it is the last time. And as ye have heard that the Antichrist shall come, even now are, these, are there many Antichrists whereby we know that it is the last time. And an antichrist is somebody that uh, is against Christ. They are against Christ. So uh, we see here, verse 19 is what I want. They went out from us, but they that were not, uh, they went out from us, but they were not of us. For if they had been of us, they would have no doubt have continued with us, but they went out that they might be made manifest that they were not all of us. And that's uh, 1 John chapter number 2 in verse 19. And that is trying to prove my point when I say that people that are into God's covenant relationship, they do not give up and walk with evil and forsake their God. Uh, those that are, have a relationship with God, they stick with him through the rain, through the storm, through sickness, through pain. They stick with the Lord. Why? Because they are of the Lord. But people who fall away from the Lord don't have a relationship with him. It's important to have a relationship with the Lord if you're going to truly walk with him. Now, I'm going to say something that's very controversial at, at this particular point. And um, uh, I see it, and we have to delve and dwell in truth. Uh, people uh, have to really submit in their hearts and their minds that if I have a relationship with the Lord, if I have a relationship with the Lord, I'm going to seek to do good and resist evil at all times. People that have a relationship with the Lord, they really resist evil. Their, 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 their mentality is to resist evil and to do good at all times. People that don't have a strong relationship with the Lord, They'll sometimes do what they want to do, and then they'll sometimes do what the Lord would have them to do. They're double-minded. And the scripture says a double-minded person is unstable in all their ways. So uh, my point is this, is that if you're going to walk with the Lord, if you're truly 
going to declare yourself to be on the Lord's side, then truly get into him and remain. Lay aside every weight and the sin that does so easily beset you and walk with the Lord. Truly get into him, both spirit, soul, and body. Live for him. Don't straddle the fence. Uh, the Jesus said it this way, straight is the gate that uh, uh, leads into eternal life, but broad is the way and wide is the gate that leadeth to destruction and many go in thereat. But you want to enter into the straight gate and that straight gate requires you to have some spiritual strength. Hallelujah. So, uh, uh, so the people that have a relationship with the Lord is so crucial. The people that have a relationship with the Lord, they will do the opposite as far as giving in to evil people, evil temptation, evil spirits. They will, they will rather turn from that and walk with God and live after God's holy commands. And in order to do that, Thank you, Lord. My God, I'm getting through this tonight. <laughs> Hallelujah. In order to do that, then, you need some spiritual strength. And the spiritual strength uh, comes from walking with God and literally being infused by his Holy Spirit. And I want to say this, that spiritual strength is different from physical strength intellectual strength, and uh, a person's human will, as you would have it, strength. Now, there's a great difference. There's a great difference because it's, it's, it's different from, I'm trying to define for you now what spiritual strength is. And, and, and the best way to do that is to kind of tell you what spiritual strength is not. Spiritual strength is not physical power. Uh, uh, Samson had uh, great spiritual or physical power, but anybody that knows Samson's life, he lacked spiritual strength. Samson went after strange women all the time. Thank you, Lord. Uh, I heard one preacher say, kind of cracked me up, said, Samson never had a saved girlfriend. Or, <laughs> Thank you, Lord. And uh, why? Because he lacked spiritual strength. Uh, he, he had a lot of physical power. The strongest man, in my opinion, that has ever lived, uh, Samson, physically. Uh, but he lacked spiritual strength. You can be strong physically, but if you're not, if you lack physical or spiritual strength, you're weak. You'll give in to temptation. You'll give in to the whims and desires of the lust of the flesh the lust of the eye, and the pride of life. Now, there's, there's intellectual strength. And, in, and, and Solomon was described as uh, the wisest man that had ever lived until Jesus arrived on the scene. Jesus said, a greater than Solomon is here. Uh, he's talking about Jesus himself is the wisest of them all that has ever walked this earth. But at that, before that time, Solomon was. And Solomon had great wisdom and great knowledge and understanding. But he lacked, he lacked great physical or spiritual strength. Solomon lacked spiritual strength because he, uh, once again, he married all these strange women and that took his heart from God. He had a thousand wives and 900 concubines. And that took him away from God. That led him away from God. He had all that wisdom, all that knowledge and understanding, but it took him away from God. And then there's the last uh, strength that I want to deal with is um, uh, uh, the human will. Uh, the human will is very powerful. The human will is very powerful, and, and, and that's illustrated in David. You remember when David was in Ziglag, and uh, his, his, all of his men and his 
their, their family was stolen and um, uh, they were taken away. And uh, the David's men were going to turn on him and get him because all of their family members and all of their goods were gone. But the Bible says David encouraged himself. And that's, that's the human will. The human will is powerful uh, to give one strength in the time of trouble. And uh, when David encouraged himself, that gave him, uh, uh, allowed him the ability to tap into spiritual strength, to pray to God, to ask him what must he do. And the Lord told David, I want you to go and pursue and recover all. And David uh, went there knowing that God was with him and he was able and he and all of his men were able to recover all that was lost. So the human will is powerful. Uh, we need human will strength. You can, you can use your will to be able to do great things uh, for not only for yourself, but for the kingdom of God. But it does not outweigh spiritual strength. Without spiritual strength, uh, being in control of your intellectual and physical and mental strength or, or that human will, you would not be able to accomplish great things. You need spiritual strength to be able to do great things in the kingdom of God. So spiritual strength is strength, it, it comes from a higher order. And that higher order is God. Uh, it literally taps into the nature, the inner nature of God. You need the inner nature of God to be able to do great exploits, to resist evil and do good at all times. Uh, that's what the scripture means when it talks about uh, having the divine nature having the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. And, and, and God affords you his divine nature. Uh, and that comes through the Holy Ghost or the Holy Spirit. When an individual turns and says, Lord, I repent of all the evil that I have done. I want you to save me. I want you to deliver me. And, and, and they, they confess Jesus Christ as their Lord and their Savior. And they repent of all their evil. And they turn to God. God fills them up with the precious gift of the Holy Ghost. And through that precious gift of the Holy Ghost, it also transfuses within you God's divine nature, which represents that, that spiritual strength, that spiritual strength. And that spiritual strength has to be cultivated by you. Then, and God gives you great spiritual strength so that you can resist evil and do good. Resist evil and do good. That, that requires God's moral character his divine nature dwelling in you through his spirit. Hallelujah. We ought to give God a praise. Now, I want to I want to say this. I'm going to spend the rest of the time now talking to you about spiritual strength. And spiritual strength it literally uh, implies it implies self-control. Uh, yeah, spiritual strength gives you the ability, it gives you temperance, uh, which means self-control, to be able to control yourself, to be able to control your appetites, your anger, your emotions, your feelings. Thank you, Lord. So that you would be able not to allow them to control you, you can lay them aside so that you can always do the right thing. Uh, we're human. And we get upset, we get angry. Uh, uh, if I see something going on, it may anger me. But the Bible says that the wrath of a man worketh not the righteousness of God. Spiritual strength 
is needed to calm your temper to bring you to uh, from a 10 unto a 5 so that you'll be able to, to, to do the right thing. Thank you, Lord, so that you don't uh, lash out in wrath. Uh, spiritual strength is needed to keep you uh, so that you can be slow to speak, swift to hear, and slow to wrath. That comes from the spirit. That comes from spiritual strength. So it gives you self-control. And, and I want you to go with me over to the book of uh, 1 Corinthians, uh, chapter number 9. 1 Corinthians, chapter number 9. And I want to read to you verse uh, 27. 1 Corinthians, chapter number 9, and verse 27. Notice what Paul says. He says, but I keep my body under and bring it into subjection, least by any means when I have preached uh, to others, I myself be a castaway. So what Paul is saying, what Paul is saying here, let me read verse 24. He says, uh, we're in 1 Corinthians chapter number 9, verse 24. It says, know ye not that they which run in a race uh, run all, but one receiveth the prize. So run that ye might obtain. He's talking about a runner running in a race. They, everybody's running, but only one uh, will receive the prize, the one that comes in first place. Uh, this is what he's talking about. So he says, uh, And every man that striveth for the mastery is temperate in all things. Everybody that is going to be a champion, going to be a runner in this particular instance, that is going after something to be a champion, you train your body. You're not up drinking and smoking and, and, and carousing the day before a race. You, you spend your time and efforts preparing yourself for the race. Why? Because you want to win. You want to be a champion. Notice then. He says, and every man that striveth for the mastery is temperate in all things. He says, now they do it to obtain a corruptible crown, but we do it to obtain an incorruptible. So he's making a comparison. We run this race so that we can receive an incorruptible crown. And, and in order to do that, uh, I can't do any and everything that my mind, my spirit, or my soul wants me to do. Uh, I, I have to be in control of the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eye, and the pride of life. I can't allow my emotions and my feelings to rule over me. I need spiritual strength to rule over. Uh, to rule over my will and my desires and my physical strength and my intellectual strength. I need spiritual strength to, to be my temperance, to be in control. So Paul says this, he says, but I, I keep my body under and bring it into subjection. Least by any means I have preached to others and I myself should be a castaway. In other words, I'm, I'm, I'm preaching good and I'm teaching good, solid messages. But if I don't apply the principles of those messages to my own life, in the end, I won't make it. If, if you uh, know to do good and do it not, you won't make it. And what would cause you to have strength to do what is right even when your mind, your body, and your spirit is telling you to do all that is wrong is spiritual strength. Spiritual strength gives you the might, gives you the power, gives you the ability to resist the evil and to do good no matter what happens and no matter what's going on. Hallelujah. And, and, and that's what spiritual strength does. It gives you that self-control to do what is right. Not half the time, but all the time. You need spiritual strength to do what is right when even when your flesh 
It's telling you to do that which is wrong. Hallelujah. My God. All right. So now let's move on to the next point. I'm going to be moving pretty quickly here. So I want you to stay with me. So you also need spiritual strength to, 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 to resist outside attacks. You need spiritual strength to resist outside attacks. And I want to illustrate that. Uh, go with me over to the uh, book of Nehemiah. Go with me over to the book of Nehemiah. Nehemiah chapter, let me see what chapter that is. Uh, chapter number six. Nehemiah chapter number six. Uh, and in that particular chapter, Nehemiah himself is being faced with a lot of turmoil, with some trouble, with some issues, and with some problems. And when, when Nehemiah, uh, he's, he's in the process of, of, of literally building the wall. He's rebuilding the wall. And as he is rebuilding that wall, he's coming against some evil. He's coming against some evil forces that are trying to stop him from building that wall. So, so, so physical strength gives you the ability to resist evil attacks. Uh, let's look here. Nehemiah chapter number six and um, uh, drop down then with me to uh, verse number nine. Nehemiah chapter number 6 and verse number 9. Um, this was Samballot, Tobiah, and Gehazim. They were, they were coming after uh, Nehemiah to kind of trick him to stop doing what he was doing. And they were trying to deceive him, uh, saying that uh, the, the king, you're, you're trying to build this wall so that you can be king yourself. And, and revolt and be uh, and be the head and Nehemiah through spiritual strength uh, was able to discern what was going on so uh, let's drop down with me uh, to verse number nine the, this is Nehemiah praying to God and notice how he's praying to God he says for they have all made us afraid Nehemiah was honest with his, his, with his emotions. Uh, he was honest with God uh, through his feelings. Why? Because he had a relationship with God. When you have a relationship with God, don't try to hide your feelings and emotion. Don't cry out and say, I'm all strong. When you are weak, <laughs> thank you, Lord. Be honest with God. He said, Lord, I'm afraid. Uh, and they're saying their hands uh, shall be weakened from the work that it uh, be not done. They're saying, Lord, uh, we're trying to build this wall. They're coming against us saying that our hands are going to be weak so that we can accomplish the work. Notice what Nehemiah says. He says, now therefore, O God, strengthen my hands. He prayed to God for strength in the midst of attacks. You have to pray to God for spiritual uh, uh, strength in the midst of attacks. When the enemy is trying to overtake you, when the enemy is trying to over uh, attack you, pray to God, God, give me spiritual strength. Lord, I'm afraid. I don't want to lose. I don't, I don't want to fall by the wayside. I don't want your glory to be dragged in the dust. Lord, give me some spiritual strength. Strengthen my hands. Thank you, Lord. And, and you know the Lord strengthened Nehemiah's hands. And, and, and he was able to build that wall in record time and get the job done. Not of his own might not of his own mental ability, not, not of his own will, but from the strength 
that came from God? Was he able to accomplish what needed to be accomplished? If you trust in God, God will give you strength and ability to accomplish what you need to accomplish. But that comes from spiritual strength. And that spiritual strength comes from you knowing God and having a relationship with God. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. So uh, let me go on to my next point. My God, I feel, I feel, I feel the train of moving now. <laughs> Hallelujah. So, so, so spiritual strength gives you the power to resist attacks. Spiritual strength gives you the ability to be temperate in all things, to be able to control your emotions, your feelings. Thank you, Lord. Uh, uh, your anger. Uh, it gives you the ability to control your, your power, your might, your physical uh, strength and ability. Thank you, Lord. It gives you power to control your intellect, your mind, your will, your desires. Now, now the, the, uh, the, the capacity or the energy uh, for doing spiritual work, spiritual strength gives you the capacity or the ability to do spiritual work, to do the work of the Lord. Now, I want you to go with me over to 2 Corinthians. 2 Corinthians, y'all just bear with me just for a moment. Uh, 2 Corinthians chapter number 2. 2 Corinthians chapter number 2. And uh, I'm sorry, 2 Corinthians chapter number 5. 2 Corinthians chapter number 5 and verse number 20. Spiritual strength gives you the ability to overcome evil in the world uh, and, and, and extending the good. Gives you the ability to overcome the evil that's all around you and not only overcome that evil, but to also do good. Amen? It's not enough just to overcome evil, but you have to overcome evil and do good at the same time. And you, in order to accomplish that, in order to do that, you need spiritual strength. Notice what Paul says. Uh, 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 2 Corinthians chapter number 5. And verse number 20, it says, let me read verse 19, because I like it. <laughs> he says, to wit, God was in Christ, reconciling the world unto himself, not imputing their trespasses unto them, and have committed unto us the word of reconciliation. Now, we have the word of reconciliation within us. In other words, we have the gospel. We should have the gospel of Jesus Christ everywhere we go, ready to tell anybody about salvation. Now, notice what Paul says. Verse 20 is where we want. He says, now then, we are ambassadors for Christ through God. Uh, we are ambassadors for Christ as, as through God did beseech us uh, by you. Now notice what he says. We are ambassadors for Christ. Uh, an ambassador is a representative. In order for me to be a good representative, I need some spiritual strength. I can't represent Christ uh, on my own, in my own power, and in my own might. Uh, that's the reason why we saved, because uh, we couldn't do good on our own. But through Jesus Christ and the power of the Holy Ghost that dwells on the inside, the Bible says you shall receive power when the Holy Ghost or the Holy Spirit has come upon you. And, and, and he said that you shall be witnesses of me in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and on the uttermost parts of the world. So, so you need some spiritual strength in order to be an ambassador for Christ. In order to uh, 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 show Christ everywhere you go, you need spiritual strength. 
Uh, the Bible says, if your enemy is hungry, feed him. If, if your enemy is thirsty, give him drink. So not only do you have to resist the temptation of the enemy, but you've got to turn around and do good to your enemy. And in order to do that, you need some spiritual strength. You can't do that in your own power. You can't do that in your own might. And the Bible says, the Bible says, this shall be the calling that sign that all men that know you are my disciple by the love that you show one to another. You, if you're going to use spiritual strength to love somebody, you need it to come from the Lord. It has to come from him in order for you to manifest that you are an ambassador for Jesus Christ. That, that you resist evil and you do good. Why? Because you are his workmanship. You've been created in Christ Jesus and prepared to do good works. <laughs> Hallelujah, my God. Let us move on then. Now, uh, the source then of spiritual strength. I'm going to talk now about the source. Uh, because the source of spiritual strength comes from your knowledge of God. Uh, an individual that doesn't know God, uh, they don't have any spiritual strength. But a person that knows God, hallelujah, they, they have tremendous spiritual strength. Uh, notice, the source of your spiritual strength, it comes from God. It comes from God. It is manifest from God. Now, I'm going to show you this. Uh, it is given to us uh, in our natural weaknesses. Uh, you receive spiritual strength, not when you're strong. You receive spiritual strength when you're weak. <laughs> Hallelujah. Let me give you some scripture of, uh, to prove out what I'm saying. Go to Isaiah chapter number 40. Isaiah chapter number 40 and... And verse, drop down to verse 29. Isaiah chapter 40. And uh, let me, let me, let me, let me, let me go to verse 28. And it says, Why sayest thou, O Jacob, and speakest, O Israel, my way is hid from the Lord, and my judgment is passed over from my God? Verse 28. Hast thou not known, hast thou not heard, that the everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth, fainteth not, neither is he weary. Uh, there is no searching of his understanding. Verse 29, he giveth power, here it is, he giveth power to the faint. Hallelujah. Those that, that, that are, are, are weak. God supplies spiritual strength. So spiritual strength comes when you're weak. Thank you, Lord. Now notice what he says. He giveth power to the faint and to them that have no might. He increases strength. So you need to underline that. Hallelujah. You need to underline that to know that. Well, that's why he says, let the weak say that I'm strong. When you at your weakest moment and you turn to the Lord, the Lord will give you great spiritual strength. <laughs> hey, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Now notice what he says. He says, even the youth shall faint and, the, and be weary and the young man shall utterly fall. But here we go. But they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings of eagles and they shall run and not be weary and they shall walk and not faint. Spiritual strength comes from when you are weak and you cry out to the Lord for help. Hallelujah. The Lord will help you and that right early. My God, let me go to another uh, verse of scripture, uh, 2 Corinthians chapter number 12. Hallelujah, 2 Corinthians chapter number 12. Y'all bear with me, I'm just trying to help you out 
get you some, get you some information. 2 Corinthians chapter number 12 and verse number 10. Notice what it says. Therefore, I take pleasure in infirmities and reproaches and necessities and persecutions and distresses for Christ's sake. For when I am weak, <laughs> hallelujah, then am I strong. Spiritual strength. Hallelujah. That's why you ought to, if you, if you, if you feel weak, thank you, Lord, you ought to cry out to God and just give him praise and, and begin to thank him. Because in your weakness, God will make you strong. Notice what Paul said. I want you to read this again. 2 Corinthians chapter number 12 and verse number 10. He says, therefore, I take pleasure in infirmities, in reproaches, in necessities, in persecutions, in distress, for Christ's sakes. Whatever I'm going through, I'm giving thanks unto the Lord. Notice what he says. For when I am weak, it's when you're weak and, and, and going through. Notice, that's when you're at your strongest. That's when you're at your strongest. For when I am weak, then I am strong. And the last, last verse on that I want you to go to is, is Psalms. I want you to go to Psalms, uh, Psalms 138. Psalms 138. And drop down then with me uh, to, to verse number three. Let me just, let me just read this. Uh, Psalms 138, verse number one. He says, I will praise thee with my whole heart. Before the gods will I sing praise unto thee. I will worship toward thy holy temple and praise thy name for thy loving kindness and for thy truth. For thou hast manifested thy word above thy name. Verse number three is what we're after. I, in the day when I cried, thou answered me and strengthened me. Uh, with strength in my soul. Notice what he said. The day that I cry, thou strengthenest me and strengthen me in my soul. And so when you're weak and, and, and need help, that's when the strength of God will be made manifest in your life. And doesn't that make perfect sense? That makes perfect sense. Because if I'm, if, if I'm, if I'm, uh, let me say it this way. Uh, uh, if, if, if I feel that uh, in my hour of need, the time when I need the Lord is when I'm weak. I know we need him all the time. Don't get me wrong. But in my illustration here, uh, you need the Lord when, when the enemy is coming up against you like a flood. The Bible says the spirit of the Lord will lift up a standard against him. You need him when you walk through the valley of the shadow of death so that you don't have to fear any evil. Why? Because thy rod and thy staff, hallelujah, they comfort me. Hallelujah, thy rod and thy staff, they are with me. You need the Lord with you 24 hours a day, seven days a week, but he'll manifest that he's with thee in the hour of need. Hallelujah. When you're going through, he'll show up. Hey, glory. When, when it seems like you're washed out and things are going down, God will show up and he'll show up and he'll strengthen you in your hour of need so that you can run this race with patience, so that you can finish your course. Hallelujah. My God. Now, let me move on quickly. I got a few more minutes here. Now, notice. Now, the, 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 the knowledge of God is the requirement of spiritual strength. If the, let me say that again. The knowledge of God is the requirement of spiritual strength. You need to know God in order to receive God's strength. And that's why I say that if you're going to be strong in the Lord, you've got to be all in. Uh, people that have stepped and, and walked uh, sloop-footed and knock-kneed 
uh, in and out, in and out, in and out. They're not getting strong. You can't, you can't tell me that uh, if I were to take a plant and, and, or a tree and plant it, and then every year I uproot it and plant it somewhere else, that tree is going to be strong. Loose here, it won't be strong. You've got to let your roots run deep into Christ. Hallelujah. So you can be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. People that are, that are giants in the kingdom of heaven, they got strong roots in the word of God. Their roots run deep. Hallelujah. In the gospels of Jesus Christ. They run deep in the letters. Hallelujah. Of the New Testament. They run deep. Hallelujah, into the Old Testament prophets and, and into the letters and into the Psalms. Why? Because they're saturated in God. They're saturated in the word of God. So that, so that if when the storms come, they may lay down, but they'll get back up. Hallelujah, the storms of life may sway you and try to move you, but they don't take you away from your steadfastness. Why? Because you are anchored in the Lord, not of your own might, not of your own strength, but because you know the Lord, you know him who is able to do exceeding and abundant. Hallelujah. So let us go over here to, to Jeremiah. My God. Hallelujah. Jeremiah. Jeremiah chapter number nine. Jeremiah chapter number nine. I love Jeremiah. I love the book of Jeremiah. Jeremiah chapter number nine. We're almost done. Thank you, Lord. Uh, Jeremiah chapter number nine and verse 24. Now notice this scripture. I preached this one year and uh, it really stuck in my spirit. Uh, Jeremiah chapter number nine. And verse 24. Let me read verse 23. It says, Thus saith the Lord, Let not the wise men glory in his wisdom. <laughs> Neither let the mighty uh, man glory in his might. That's what we said earlier. And he says, Let not the rich man glory in his riches. But let him that glorieth Glory in this, that he understandeth and knoweth me. Now, if you're going to glory, if you're going to receive strength, you've got to glory and restraint and receive strength in your knowledge of God. It comes, spiritual strength comes from your relationship with God. If you have a strong relationship with God, you have strong spiritual strength. Hallelujah. You have his divine nature uh, uh, in you and abiding in you so that you can resist the evil and choose the good. Now notice what he says. Notice what he says. He says, thus saith the Lord, let not the, uh, I'm sorry, verse 24, but let them, let him that glorieth glory in this, that he understandeth and knoweth me, that I am the Lord which exercise loving kindness, judgment, and righteousness in the earth. For in these things I delight, saith the Lord. Now notice what he says. I am the Lord. <laughs> if all of you that exercises righteousness and judgment, and I delight in these things. Amen. Why? Because I am the Lord. So, so, so uh, you have to pray and seek God and ask God for his spiritual strength. When you pray and ask God, Lord, here I am. I need your help. God is there to help you and that right early. Why? Because God delights in it. Uh, when Paul was going through and he was asking the Lord to remove uh, whatever affliction or, 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 or hand of the enemy, well, the thorn of his flesh. Uh, Jesus said, my grace is sufficient 
My, my strength is made perfect in weakness. Thank you, Lord. And, that's, and that strength, what he was talking about, is his spiritual strength. That spiritual strength helps you to overcome. Thank you, Lord. Whatever the enemy would throw your way, whatever your own mind can think of, whatever evil influences try to overcome you, spiritual strength, you know in your God will give you what you need to overcome it. And, and so spiritual strength then, it's needed in the hours of temptation, it's needed uh, in the hours of trouble. When trouble is upon you, you need spiritual strength. It's needed to do active service. Uh, if you're going to work with God, if you're going to build the kingdom that the gates of hell shall not prevail against, you need spiritual strength. And that spiritual strength comes from you knowing your God in times of weakness, uh, in times of temptation, in times of tribulation. That's why God sends you tests. That's why God sends you uh, trials so that you can build yourself up on his most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost. If you want to know God, you have to seek him. Uh, you have to pray to him. You have to call on his name, not just when things are going well, but you got to call on him when things are going bad. Uh, and when things are going bad, you got to count it all joy. You got to praise him and magnify him and God will give you strength. You need spiritual strength. Hallelujah. Spiritual strength will give you the ability to be tempted and temp uh, temperate in all things. You won't go over the deep end. You'll keep your emotions in check. You'll be able to keep God's covenant, uh, his covenant word that he has given unto you. And you'll be able to walk with God. Hallelujah. My God. Now, my last point is this. We need spiritual strength to manage the tasks that God expects us to do uh, on, on a daily basis. We need God to help us. We need God to help us in our decision making. We need God to help us to get through the day. There's a lot that the enemy wants to do to, to get us distracted, to kill, steal, and to destroy us. But we need God's spiritual strength to get up in the morning, to put our feet on the floor, and, and to move about the day without being consumed by the enemy. We need the strength of the Lord. I see why David said, the Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? Notice what he said. The Lord is the strength of my life. Whom shall I be afraid? And, and, and when you recognize that the, your strength comes from the Lord, you know where your strength lies and where your strength comes from. You'll be strong in him. You'll drink from the well that will never run dry. You'll appreciate your relationship with the Lord. And because you appreciate your relationship with the Lord, you won't be soon to give up and give in and turn it over uh, for a flea of uh, fleeting moments of sin and pleasure. You won't be like Esau uh, that sell out his birthright because he didn't understand. <laughs> Hallelujah. He didn't understand his God. He didn't understand the power of the inheritance of the birthright. So he gave in to his fleshly appetite and he lost out. Hallelujah. Why? Because he lacked knowledge and understanding of what it meant. But Jacob understood. Jacob, uh, his brother, understood what it meant. Hallelujah. And so he, 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 he tricked his brother. My God. And Jacob lacked spiritual strength. Because he should have recognized that, that he, God, God was going to use him. Hallelujah. Uh, anyway. 
How you ain't got to, when you have a relationship with God, you don't have to use trickery to get what God has for you. You don't have to uh, skim skis and, and, and be a skeezer. And, and, and you don't have to be an individual where, where all is coming from my mind and my thoughts are lies. Hallelujah. You trust in God. You believe in God. And the God that you, that you serve, he'll make room for you. Hey, glory. You ain't got to promote yourself. <laughs> all you got to do is humble yourself beneath the mighty hand of God and he will exalt you. He'll lift you up in due time and he'll give you strength to endure. Hallelujah. So that's our Bible study on tonight. And we certainly do praise and thank God for this word. And we want to encourage our people uh, to come out and to be with us in our Sunday services. We're going to a two-tier format on this coming Sunday, wherein uh, our first service is going to happen at 9 a.m. to uh, 10.30. Hallelujah. Come on out. And then our second tier service will happen at 11 to 12.30. Come on out. We're shortening the, the time spans of our services. Both services will be the same, if you allow me to say it that way. The, the same preached word of God and uh, same praise and worship, all of it, but it'll be a condensed version. Uh, our chairs are going to be, uh, our seating is going to be social distance. Uh, things will look different to you, but that's all right. Come on out and be safe. Wear your mask. Uh, we're asking people to come in to wash their hands or, or use the hand sanitizer. Wear your mask at all times. Amen. So, so come on out and let's worship with the Lord. Let us enjoy his spirit, enjoy his anointing. And I thank God for each and every one of you. Uh, remember, uh, the church uh, needs your tithes and your offerings. Uh, God said, bring your tithes and your offerings into my house so there can be meat in the house. Well, anytime you sow seed, you can look and you can reap a harvest. If you don't sow seed, then you can't look for a harvest. Amen? Hallelujah. And, and don't rob God. Don't steal from God. <laughs> hey, hallelujah. And God says he loves a cheerful giver. If God were to bless you with a great sum of money, you would need spiritual strength. Hallelujah. To bring in your tithes to the to the, to the house of the Lord. Some of you, if you get a little bit of money, you need spiritual strength. <laughs> Hallelujah. To give unto the Lord. Uh, I'm, I'm being silly right now. I'm going to let you go. But I'm, I'm serious at the same time. God is on our side and he's doing great things. So also, uh, you can bring your tithes and your offering and drop them in our, our drop box, a secure box. Here at Christian Ministries, 501 West 31st Street, Erie, PA, 16508, or go on to Tidely and, and, and do it that way as well, electronic e-giving. So I thank God for you. May heaven smile upon you. And I praise God for each and every one of you that has tuned in on today. Let us pray. Gracious Father, Lord, we thank you for the word on today. We ask you, Lord, that you bless us with that spiritual strength that we need to make it through, through these uh, trying times. And we know, Lord, that it comes from knowing you, the only true and wise God, and your Son, Jesus Christ, whom you have sent to be the propitiation for our sins. And, Lord, now we repent of any evil that we have made have done in thy sight. And, Lord, we receive you as our grace and our mercy and our strength. Bless us. And wash us with the blood of Jesus. And Father, we thank you. We praise you. Give you glory and honor. In Jesus' name, amen and amen.